When I first heard about the idea of developing a game with such important and so many water locations, it did cause a little bit of panic, to be honest, because these things are traditionally very hard to do in real-time CG. But for us in this game, the ocean is such a pivotal location where many, many of the important scenes happen there. It was important to find a way to do it and do it well. Animation plays a big part in developing a game that's on a sea surface. Obviously, we have the sea simulation. We have a boat that needs to react and behave in a believable manner on that surface. And then we have the characters that also need to react. In order to get the characters behaving realistically on the boat, we tried various different techniques of motion capture. We had performances completed on a movable floor and that simulated the rocking behavior of the boat. All these different elements, the sea simulation, the boat rocking and the characters all needed to work cohesively together for any given scene. We have a procedural sea surface that's used throughout the game. It can generate varying levels of storminess, so it can go from calm right up to a raging storm that we see in one of the levels. The system can tell where things are floating in the water and generate foam around them and generate wakes from boats and that kind of thing. So that really helped us. In terms of the underwater, we looked at using volumetric lights and mist to create this illusion that light is actually traveling through the water and diffusing and dispersing as it hits the water, which was quite a difficult effect to achieve. To capture the audio for the dive boat, we rented a small fishing boat, the similar size to the dive boat in the game. We went out with a multi-track recorder, some microphones, and positioned them in all the different angles that you need to capture the various sounds the boat makes from the motor, the water slushing against the hulls, and the wind in the rigging. We got lucky actually on the day we went out recording. As soon as we left the safety of the harbour, our school blew up and the waves got pretty choppy, which was great for the storm in the game. We got plenty of good source material, with the boat lurching and rocking about and creaking and groaning. We brought the audio back from sea, dried them out, and then chopped them up into loops and bits and pieces in a similar way you would with a car game, and then integrated those into quite a complex dynamic audio system that reacted to the movement of the boat and the weather systems and provided us some good results. As the storm encroaches in the game, we ramped up the audio elements of the wind and waves and the boat engine becomes more dynamic and reactive. This sort of mirrors the emotional state of the characters in the game. Another important aspect with the storm scene is that it represents a gear change in the story. So this is really the first time the characters are leaving the relative safety of the start of the game. And we definitely wanted to find a way to represent that in the art. So what we have here is we have a shift from the lighting style at the start of the game, which is very much a found lighting style. It's all lit by the sunlight and bounce light. There's no artificial light sources at all. And for the first time then in the storm scene, we changed to a much more filmic set lit feel. And that is to get that little feeling of unease there. There's a color change also, so we go from a natural grade to more of a blue-green tint, and that also brings that feeling of unease that everything might not be quite right. And it's the first time in the game that we really see that. So it kicks off then what is to follow in the rest of the game in terms of the horror aspects when they do get on board the ship. As well as that, there's a really important change of camera in terms of when the storm starts. So we go from a more composed, steady camera to a really handheld feel. And the idea there is that we want to emphasize the effects of the storm and have a lot more kinetic feel to the camera work. Also, the feeling there is that you want the audience present in the scene. So having a handheld, it gives this feeling that there's almost an unseen participant following around the characters filming this stuff. So for example, we try things like every time there's movement or a character is dragged or pushed off, the camera goes with them and follows them just to get the impression that you're right there with them and you're taking part in the storm as well. So that was quite an important beat. Once the characters journey into the ghost ship, the water's still ever present and we use audio to remind the players of this with the waves pounding against the hull of the boat, like the heartbeat of an enormous beast with these metal creaks and groans, this leviathan ready to swallow them up at any moment. The underwater content is a very different challenge. There's a different timing mindset you have to consider. It's all about observing and absorbing yourself into that area. We looked at various different reference, film, TV and game reference too. Luckily, two of us on the team scuba dived before, which was good. 
We even went to a local pool and did some film reference for some of the more complicated scenes in the game, the fight scenes. We found in a lot of the reference, the divers would do a small paddle movement with their hands to readjust and center themselves. And also we found a lot of the divers use the environment to pull themselves along and push off from. So we try to incorporate those details into our work. There's something really fun about shooting on stormy conditions and there's something fun about conveying that. But interestingly, one of the things in conveying that in terms of CG is that you have to do a lot of things you'd maybe get for free if you were actually shooting it. So if you were really out there in a storm holding your camera, you would be getting blown around and you'd be getting rain on the lens or whatever you might get. When you work in CG, everything's automatically clean. So sometimes it's about how you can dirty up the shots and bring back some of those natural elements to convince the viewer that actually that storm is real. So for example, in the storm you see, you have a lot of mist, a lot of rain moving around, showing how windy it is, showing how stormy it is, blown into the camera. So that really adds a lot of life. In the underwater scene, we used it for silt, for plankton, for any kind of dirt and noise in the ocean. And without that, it can really seem quite lifeless. So that was a hugely important element.